this thing on? All right. Oh, ow, now, brown cow. We going? Good? Yeah. What's up, MFers? It's a scary time of the year for a lot of you guys. It is the winter time where bass fishing can really come to a screeching halt. But it's actually one of my favorite times to fish. If you follow my channel, it's not only a time where we've caught fish all around the country, but you can catch some of the biggest fish all year long. They're some of the fattest fish of the year. And there's a lot of myths people think about fish slowing down, slowing down their metabolism, not eating as much, not moving as much. When in reality, I think forward-facing sonar and, and just modern technology has really exposed it. That that's not necessarily true. So if you're like me down here in Texas and most of the country where you're not gonna have ice locked up in your lakes all winter long and you still wanna go out and catch some bass, catch some giant bass, this video is gonna be for you. It's not only going to be the best baits for December per se, but it's gonna be the next couple months, the exact baits that I will go out and target fish in all different types of bodies of water and all different areas of the water column. We're gonna cover the best cover, the best structure, what I look for when I get to the lake, and exactly how to break it down. So without further ado, let's hop into my favorite winter baits and presentations. Let's go. So I'm trying to think about how I wanna break this down exactly because we have so many different types of fisheries that act so different in the winter months that I want this to be as applicable for you, the viewer, as possible. Because I live in South Texas, Southeast Texas. It's the damn jungle down here. A lot of these lakes won't get below 45, 50 degrees and they'll eat the exact same baits I've been throwing all winter long. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but I want this to apply to a wider range of people like you guys. And so let's kind of start with a type of fishery that I really love to fish in the winter time. And that is a highland reservoir, a cleaner type reservoir. And, and I'm not gonna stay super specific to that. And with my bait selection, I just wanna let you guys know you can catch them in little man-made 100 acre, 50 acre lakes just as well out of areas in the country too on these techniques. But let's talk about lakes that have uh, a mixture of different depths, mixture of different bottom substrate, um, and water clarity. But one thing I really love about the winter time is it can be a time of the year when the water cleans up more so than any other time. Um, a lot of these Ozark lakes, you know, you can get to Table Rock even and they have 20 plus feet of visibility. So that's a different monster than simply going to your, your local pond and there's all this decaying crap coming off the bottom or stirred up from winter and the, the wind and stuff and, and it's all blown out and muddy. I treat those two situations very differently and to be completely honest, I seek out the cleanest water in the winter. I think that's going to be a theme that you guys hear from me is when, when I'm presented with cold water, cold muddy water is something that you generally want to try to shy away from. So. I'm going to approach a lake in that manner. So if I go to a highland reservoir, we gotta think about what the bass are doing this time of year in the winter. They are no longer, for the most part, I'm, this is a 90% rule, 90% won't be, and 10% do whatever the hell they want to because they're fish. But for the most part, fish will wanna get more on vertical, deeper structure. And what I mean by that is, if you catch them on docks, uh, on secondary points, main lake points, um, in the back, on, uh, in grass, whatever. They like to suck out more so into some of those deeper drains and cuts. They really like channel swing banks. If you're a person that doesn't know forward-facing sonar or doesn't have it, this is actually a great time of the year for you. People think of the winter as only suspending fish offshore. But truthfully, this is a time of year when I try to seek out that clean, rocky substrate um, and that's a great time. You don't even need forward facing sonar. You can drag something along. So let's start right there. When you're in these types of channel swing areas, um, main lake bluffs, bluffing, stuff like that, the fish can suspend, but there's almost always fish to be caught on the bottom of the lake. And I got two different baits that I will fish on the bottom of the lake that are literally going to catch fish everywhere, not just in these scenarios. But the first one, you guys know the damn deal. You've seen this on the channel forever. This is the time of year when I pull out the magic tube. So the magic tube is something I tried to keep secret for a while. You guys know the deal though. Basically just that smoke purple tube. It looks stupid. You guys might be like, oh, he's talking about smallmouth fisheries. How does this apply to me? No, Cole can testify back there. You guys can testify if you've been watching the channel forever. There's something about this on the bottom of the lake. I don't know if it represents a shad or a crawdad, 
they eat the shit out of this thing. I've caught them on this thing when the water was literally 34, 35 degrees, when there was ice on the same pockets I was fishing on this bait right here. Um, the six sense crew is something that I designed to kind of just really be a hybrid between a craw and a tube, hence the crew. Uh, and it works really well for this technique. Any other smoke purple tube as well, but I will Texas rig this bait. I, the thing I like that we designed with the crew is it's got this solid head up here. And so you can fish a Texas rig or you can put a tube jig head in there for, for different presentations. But I specifically Texas rig these and I will fish it with a free rig now too on those six cents slider weights. But this is a bottom technique. This isn't a stroking technique. It's not a, you know, a fall technique where they're gonna eat on the fall on a spiral or something like that with a light weight. This is 100% fishing with a 3 8 half ounce weight on the bottom, dragging it around these areas. Um, old tube boy is probably watching this video. He don't want me to share his secrets, but um, yeah, this, this, these baits, if you got clean water and it's cold, I, you can't go wrong with these baits. I, I promise you, you will catch more fish. And it's really something that seems off the wall maybe to a lot of people, but it doesn't matter if you're in Florida or Maine or Washington or Missouri or California, I've caught, fish on these things everywhere. The second thing I like to throw in that scenario is a jig. Everyone likes to throw a jig. So I'm very specific with the jigs that I use when I do use them. Um, I think every jig gets kind of grouped into some categories, but I like to trim my jigs and make my own jigs with different size hooks, different size weights than what's really available on the market a lot of times. This is your traditional, your standard half ounce, six cents hybrid jig. That is not what I like to throw in the winter in this situation. I like to throw something that's a lot more like that. We're not even talking finesse jig. We're talking like a micro jig. There's a lot of companies that make a really good micro jig. Something about this little tiny guy just gets so many bites when the water is crazy, crazy cold. We're talking water in the 30s. You can catch fish on something like that. And you know, I'll make some up myself where I'm still having a, you know, a half ounce football head, but look how small, that's like an inch and a half, two inches at most profile. I put a little one-aught hook, real small little hook in there, and I'll put some rubber in it. Sometimes, you know, I'll mix it up. I, you can make super heavy three quarter ounce football jig, but look how small that guy is. Let me hold it up next to that regular size hybrid jig, which isn't the biggest jig in the world, but Look at the size difference and profile when you start talking about that. And then I match the trailer to it as well. So I'll take a damn time. Let's, let's do a really finesse micro jig that might look too small to you, but I'll take like a two inch craw bait or a little beaver. Um, a little bit of flaps okay, but I actually, you know, the less flap the better. I, I really like a chunk style trailer a lot this time of year too. But we'll thread that on there. I mean, we're talking about just a little guy, just a little tiny Tim down there. And I'm not talking about just smallmouth fishing. This is a largemouth bait to me. Again, the entire profile of this thing is half the size of the regular size hybrid jig without a trailer on it. So we're talking really tiny baits. Um, I catch fish on this type of stuff in man-made reservoirs with mud bottom just on flats on points when the bite is super tough when those fish are glued to the bottom and they don't want to react to anything something really really small like this or small and natural like this smoke tube i don't know what the hell it represents they just eat them really really well I'm giving you guys the juice whether you know it or not so let's talk a little bit about suspended fish and fish that are on some of the same structure but this can be in your local pond. This can be on a 100,000 acre Ozark Lake. But when the wind picks up or you get some low light conditions in the winter, even though you think that these fish are not moving around, they're not active, things can change a lot. And the Highland Reservoirs and really any clean lake, you can be shocked by how close to the bank those fish will get and how shallow at times they will get when they decide for whatever reason, you know, maybe the sun's out in the afternoon or you had wind hitting a spot all day, they'll just slide right up out of 30, 40, 50 feet. They'll get right on the bank and they'll sit up there and feed. And I like to look for the same type of uh, channel swing areas, points, bluff ends with rock transition makes it even better. Or if you're at your local pond, you're at your local lake and you simply got a jetty, a man-made jetty that sticks out, especially man-made jetties that are some of the deeper 
jetties with the sharper drop off where those fish can come out of that deep water and slide right up there and feed. The wind's been hitting it directly all day. That's when I'll pick up probably my favorite wintertime bait right here, which is the old jerk and stick. If you guys notice, this is actually a new one from Sixth Sense. This is, um, and it's in a, a special little color that's gonna be a little custom Millican fishing color. This is the 97 size. Um, it's gonna come in the deep as well. Um, and it's also going to be silent. This is the silent version, as you guys can see right there. Six cents, provoke. Um, I, I really, I, I just kind of experiment to see if they want a bigger one or a smaller one. But this time of year, you really want to make sure that this bait is suspending perfectly, in my opinion, because you're going to be moving it slower than any other type of the year. And especially when you're fishing for these fish where they're slid up real shallow. They've pushed up shallow where the wind's blowing in. If you have a bait that's going to slow float or you have a bait that's going to sink, when you're fishing up there in three feet of water where these fish have pulled up to, the bait's going to be out of the strike zone immediately. So you got to be really cognizant of how this bait is in the water. And the way, you know, if you watch the channel a lot, you know this is what I do, but to, to figure that out, and, this, and really it can change throughout the day. Um, when it floats, sinks, different water temperatures um, in general, colder water will, it's more dense, so it'll hold a bait up a little higher, so it'll slow float a bait that maybe was suspending perfectly. Same with warm water. If you get warm water in the summer, your, your baits that's, that's suspended in that cold 40 degree water are gonna sink. So you always gotta keep an eye on that, and I, I do that by adding a little bit of lead wire to the front hook. I always put on the front hook, I think it gives a little bit more diving angle. Um, I think a head down postured bait does better for the most part uh, so I don't ever add it to the the middle or the back hook so that's what I'll do um, something to keep in mind with that once again we'll get a little bit scientific but the water is going to be coldest at the top of the water column so in the winter and then the warmer water obviously is on the bottom and once you start throwing a deeper diving jerk bait or you're adding a little bit of weight to it you need to understand uh, and for those of you guys that have forward facing sonar you'll understand this too when that bait gets, you, you might have a bait next to the side of the boat that you're looking at it and you're like, all right, that's a perfect amount of lead weight, it suspends. Well, when this bait gets down further in the water column, if you use a deeper diver, the water's going to be less dense because it's gonna be warmer down there and that bait's gonna wanna sink more. So that's something you gotta keep in mind a little bit too. Not something you gotta think about so much when you're fishing two or three feet of water from the bank or, or throwing up in a shallow body of water. But when you're fishing deeper water with a jerk bait, you really got to think about that. You're wondering why, you know, this jerk bait only dives to 10 feet. It's 17 feet deep. Why is it dragging on the bottom, getting snagged? It's because it's actually sinking at a different point in the water column. I'm not going to get too much more technical. Just something to think about because I do think in the winter and, and cold water months, a perfectly suspending jerk bait is the most important way to fish that bait. Now, moving off the bank. We're also gonna have fish that are really gonna be susceptible to forward-facing sonar that are on bait, or they're just out roaming looking for bait. And so there's a lot of cool stuff happening right now, uh, depending on who you talk to. I know people have opinions that think that it's the damn devil to go catch fish on forward-facing sonar and that there's no skill involved, but I challenge that person to go out in 60 feet of water and try to keep up with two bass that are swimming 20 miles an hour trying to keep up with the ball of bait anyways i digress but my favorite presentations as you guys know um, for fishing those is with a little swim bait um, this is one of the two ways that i like to fish for them we're talking about fish that are 15 feet of water uh, or deeper a lot of times even you know 70 80 200 feet of water when you're at the ozarks they can they're not down there but they'll suspend 10 to 40 feet down um, but a little swim bait is absolutely deadly obviously an alabama rig will still catch fish but you're gonna be mistaken and sad a lot of times when you throw the alabama rig around these days because the fish have seen it too much they're too pressured they still eat it there's days when it outperforms a single swimmer in a, a rig i'm about to show you but to me um it, it'll stay on my deck some days but this is more effective. I catch more fish on this. I catch big fish, small fish, whatever, but a little tiny bait. I don't throw this time of year, you know, the thread fin shad are generally, I feel like in that, uh, that two to three inch range at most three inches, a lot of times an inch, inch and a half. 
and we thread that little 2.7 divine on that jig head, you know, 3 16th ounce all the way up to 3 8 half ounce on that jig head, you can get this down to the fish really well. And the, the good thing about this, I've talked about it forever, but the plastic density on this 2.7 size is really, really soft. And that allows this bait to kick at really slow speeds. I like to fish this really, really slow whenever I'm seeing suspended fish or fish on bait on the screen. Now the other rig you guys know I love to throw is the hover juggle. And the Demiki rig is something that you guys are hearing or, or jig head minnow style rig or strolling is gotten so popular. And you guys know that um, I like to do things a little bit different. I, I, I do throw a, a, a jig head minnow type rig quite a bit, but we got these new hooks from Sixth Sense um, called the Juggle Shot hooks. And it's got that great O'Shaughnessy bend. This just came out. I'm gonna show you something else that has not come out yet. I don't know if I'm supposed to show you, but we're going to. But this is the bend in the hook that you want. O'Shaughnessy bend, nice light wire, but all the weight will stay on this point right there, that fish's jaw. And so when that weight is right there, if you pull right there on that point, it's not gonna open up a hook like this, like a round bend would. And when you get that, that hook opening up uh, or just not penetrating with that, that sharper angle, that's when you're gonna lose those fish when they jump off. And it's got a big barb on it. It's just perfect. It's everything that I wanted in a hook. And this is the, that juggle minnow. And this is a very versatile bait. You can fish it on that jig head. You can fish it on a, a, a three quarter, one ounce jig head if you want to, to really get a reaction strike. But sometimes the fish want this straight tail more so than a swim bait. You'll have to experiment, see what they want that day. But just to rig this in my little hover, hovel, hovel, juggle, hover juggle method, I tie that hook on, we'll slide him right through there. And you know, usually I'll tie a keeper on that hook, but we got something coming that you're not actually gonna need that. And I don't wanna show this up close, Cole, too much because shit gets knocked off really fast and these are just prototypes and it's a final prototype because it's badass. But we have a way now, or we're going to, when they come out in the next couple months, for you to put one of these super realistic six sense jig heads, like on our line through head, and it'll hook onto this hook. And so it's not gonna sling off like a, uh, a nail weight that you're constantly having to super glue in, or you catch a fish and they send it to the moon when they jump. And um, yeah, what an effective way that's going to be to fish that bait right there uh, and make it even more natural. Plus with this, the way that this hooks to the hook, um, for those that have fished the hover juggle rig, and I know thousands of you guys have because it's become really popular now, which is awesome. You'll know that you can't add more than a quarter ounce or so of weight with the, the bull, the, uh, nail weights because it will want to pull this hook up out as you're pulsing it and casting it far because of all the weight in the front. So at that point you pretty much previously had to go with a jig head minnow, Demiki, uh, a fixed head. But with this being so good at hooking onto there, we're gonna be able to release it in those heavier weights and you're gonna get that amazing, you know, flexing action that comes with this bait that kind of stalls it and pauses it in the water column like they haven't seen before and have that heavier head. So I'm excited for that to come out. We got the hooks out now, they're good to go. Um, you guys will just have to use treble heads or nail weights for now but that's gonna be an awesome, uh, awesome rig for anyone fishing for fish with forward facing sonar that are on bait balls, or if you're at your bank fish and you're at a pond and you're seeing just a lot of shad flipping here and there, fire this son bitch in there, let it sink for you know three or four seconds and then just start twitching all the way back to the boat. That is a killer. All right, and last but not least, let's talk about the folks that are like me and Coleslaw here that get to go giant hunting in the winter. Um, again, we, down here in Texas and different parts, the water will get cold. There's different climates. Saying that Texas fishing and categorizing it as that uh, really paints into a box that's not true because there's like so many different climates and, and, and ways that these lakes set up. Some set up like traditional Ozark lakes. Some stay lily pads and grass all winter and others, um, they get a little bit of stain in them and the fish really like to get on some of them hard spots and shell beds and stuff like that. So. This is what I got tied on right now and what I'm about to go sling a whole bunch this next few days. This is the hangover line through swim bait. And this is a great bait in so many different scenarios. And I know you guys are like, oh, it's not out yet. Well, 
like I told you guys, I think January, I think December 9th is the day we're hoping to get this bait released. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. It's suspended fish on live scope. Great for that. It's great for in the winter. It's great for fishing on the same areas on the bottom where you drag a Carolina rig, where you'd throw the next bait I'm about to show you, a crankbait. Um, this bait is absolutely killer and it comes in three different weighting. It's going to come in three different weights and a bunch of incredible colors like this one. I love as natural of a color as possible. And look at that, super natural. And one thing I talked about when, uh, when I put a post up the other day that we're releasing this, I said that they're going to come in a clamshell so you can reuse the clamshell. And a lot of people are like, nah, that's really unique. Come in a clamshell. No other bait's done that except... The thing, and you're right, baits come in clamshells. A bunch of six cents soft plastics come in clamshells, but you're gonna store storage of these line throughs is uh, is a nightmare because you can't keep the tails straight like they need to be, and this bait needs the tail to be straight to work properly. So when you get done using this bait, you uh, don't really have a way to store it effectively. The clamshell comes with these little slits in there, and so you just pop them like that. And all of a sudden, you got a way to store this bait in your box where that tail is going to stay just how you want it to. I don't know. It's a cool little feature that um, we're coming out with with this bait. Again, I can't wait for it to be out. It's going to be very, very soon. And you guys can start catching giant bass on it as well. But again, what I'm looking for when I show up to the lake with this bait, the most prominent main lake points, the biggest main lake flat points that drop off into deep water, but they can move up on there and slide up to them, especially if there's brush piles, if there's flooded bush, brush, something like that. Great places to throw this, but again, get that heaviest version sinks fast. You can fish it, it stays down in the water column really well. So you can wind it and grind it right over the top of rock piles, shell beds, stuff like that. It's a freaking killer. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about, you know, Places down here in Texas and really across the country, people don't think about it, but a crankbait is absolutely killer. And this is a, a series of crankbait that we're coming out with called the Pressure Series. I don't know when these are gonna be out, but they'll be, I think in the next two months, these will be out. But let's think about the characteristics of this bait right here that I like a lot. So I love the 300DD and the 500DD from Six Sense because they have flat sides. They're not as aggressive of a wobble. It's a lot tighter of a rolling action as opposed to the big, like the Cloud 9 series with the head that is freaking wagging super wide back and forth and dives at a super steep angle. This guy and the 300 and 500 DD will dive at less of a steep angle. So they'll kind of swim down really, really tight with good shoulder wiggle. Um, flat sided baits, as you guys know, maybe, um, Excellent in cold water, excellent in pressured situations, which is why it's called the Pressure Series. But um, this narrow bill is going to give it an even more subtle action than any of our baits, our, our deep crankbaits in the market. I think our deepest one's going to run to 13 or 16. There's a 16. And so that's going to allow you to fish these areas with fish that are not as active. They're the slowest moving um, time of the year when they're on the bottom of the lake. And target them like you never have been before. This bait is almost like a handmade balsa style bait with a tight wiggle that's been available, you know, hundreds of different companies forever. They've been the deal in cold water. But if you guys hear that, they come with a weight transfer system. So the biggest problem has always been with those wood baits, those balsa baits and cedar baits that work really well in that cold water, they cast like a piece of bread. So with this weight transfer system, you can bomb this thing so far. The biggest ones, I mean, you can bomb 150 feet. You don't have to throw them on, you know, a freaking bait finesse system or a spinning rod or something like that. You can throw it on your deep crankbait rod, 15 pound test, and bomb that some bitch to the moon. And really, the most effective areas for fishing this style of bait, crankbait, like always, all times of the year, you want it banging on the bottom, digging up the dirt, um, but you want to fish this thing around hardcover. And what I mean by that more so than anything is not necessarily the rock and stuff that are on the channel swings, the points like we're talking about in the highland situations, but I'm talking more about like lowland lakes like Sam Rayburn, um, Lake Eufaula, Alabama. We're talking about lakes that are mud and clay bottom and there's shell beds, there's 
hard spots for whatever reason from erosion over a long period of time that you'll see on side imaging um, or just simply from you guys fishing spots and, and really feeling around down there with the jig or the crankbait, that's where the fish will pile up. And a lot of times there's not necessarily discernible on the side imaging, so you gotta really look around for those areas and, and kind of fire the bait out. But once you find those isolated harder spots, whether that be in five feet of water or 20 feet of water, a crankbait is really tough to beat. One thing that I do like to do, um, that I'll do a lot of times of the year, but I think it can be important in the winter time with crankbait fishing, is to mix up your retrieves. When I was up in Nebraska, we were catching fish doing this as well, but the water was like 40 degrees. They'll still eat a moving crankbait, but I will mix in a lot more of a sweep with the rod and then reel the slack up slow and sweep it. Um, or I'll just do a, a slower retrieve than your traditional, you know, burning through a school or something in the summer. A slow retrieve and then mix in a stop. Pause it when you think you're near a fish, pick the tempo back up and stop it. A lot of these fish, they're, they're cold. If you're in anywhere in the country where the water's in the 30s or even low 40s, they're not just going to chase the bait down and get it all the time. But if you stop a bait and they're chasing it, they're tracking it and it stops in their face, they're going to eat it or they're going to swim away. Um, and so a lot of times that can make all the difference in the success you have that day. All right, cool. I think that's all I fucking got. Shit. Well, Meffers, that's my uh, that's my approach for winter. I didn't talk too much about line rods, stuff like that, or I don't know, it's hard to really dive into what winter fishing is because it's so different in so many different parts of the country. But I try to give you guys an idea of what I do all over the place. I try to keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it slow, and uh, just remember that the fish do bite. They will eat, and the bite window might be shorter, but they will eat at some point during the day. Hopefully this helped you out. Drop a comment with any questions down below and uh, I will do my best to get back to you. But I'm gonna go catch some giant fish on that hangover now this weekend. Yeah, that sounds fun. All right, I'm out of here. Peace. Yeah, man. Uh, it wasn't on. Oh. <laughs>